So now we're going to talk to you a little bit about the math of this clock thing, more specifically this, this gorgeous piece of machinery right here. Um, so we are given the differential equation of, I hope you can see it, uh, theta double prime of t plus g over rho times sine of theta of t equals zero. And so the parameters that we were given for that were theta of zero is pi over four, which is b, and b is the angle of like, boop, like the angle of how high you're holding it when it starts. So that's theta at time zero. And then, boop, <laughs> it'll go swing to the other side at that same angle. And then theta prime of zero is zero. So we started to try to solve that little equation there. And we end up with, um, since theta, we're going to take theta to be small. So that means that this sine of theta here is just going to turn out to be just theta of t instead of sine theta of t. So then we're going to come over here and it's going to turn into theta double prime of t plus a times theta of t equals zero. And theta of zero is still b and theta prime of zero is still zero. And once we plug all that into Mathematica, it's going to give us theta of t is b times the cosine in parentheses of square root of a times t. So we have to find out what a and b are. And b, we've, we were given that b is uh, pi over 4. And then a is what was right here, which is g over rho. So we have to now, what do, you, what do we do after that? After we have, the, oh yeah, just kidding. I'm fine, don't worry about it. <laughs> so we put those, the a and b into this equation here. So now we're gonna have theta of t equals pi over four times cosine of in parentheses, square root of g over rho times t. And that's gonna be like how we're gonna find the angle theta at a time t. So uh, what we needed to find next was c, which is the damping constant. And we, were, we had a little bit of trouble with that. So we can tell you how to find c, but Mathematica really doesn't like us, so we ha couldn't actually find c. But here's, here's the way we would have done it, is we would put all the stuff that we needed into that differential equation, right? And when we solve for c, that should have given us a function. And the function would kind of look something like that. There's probably some little squiggles there, you know. But eventually, the oscillation would come down to zero. And that zero, where it crosses that axis, should be a time t. And that time t should be what we measured from like if we started swinging this thing, we timed how long it would take for it to stop. And we measured that to be around like 60 seconds, around a minute mark. So that graph of C, that time where it crosses the X axis there should be around 60 seconds. So our graph of C would give us that time T. I think that's how it should have happened. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll include the screenshot of the notebook, but for some reason, Mathematica kept trying to give us cotangent functions, mm -hmm. not uh, decay functions. So it just and kept so going just on kept forever. Going on forever and ever, and didn't eventually come down to a stop. So, yeah, we weren't sure what exactly. We knew we pro we probably should have taken something out or included something we didn't, but we couldn't figure out what that was. Yeah, so, but we, we got pretty close. We got pretty close. We know what's going on. Like trust us, we know. Clock, physical clock works. It's a little bit picky, but it works, so I think that we did a pretty okay job, you know? I did like this project because I feel like making that clock was really cool, and it was really exciting when it worked. So. Yeah, and I feel like 3D printing is a really good thing to integrate into Calc 3 especially, uh, integrate. because it's because it's literally a three-dimensional class, and so being able to actually see all of the math that we learned about in class being used for something like this and actually having a physical application. For me, that helped me understand a lot of it a lot better because I tend to see, I tend to understand things better when I can see a visual 
have a visual application of it. Yeah, absolutely. So this is a really, this is a cool project. This is, this yeah. is definitely fun. Yeah. Right. I feel like Calc 3 is a very conceptual class and it's hard to visualize stuff. Like if you're not already good at that, it just, it helps having real things yes. there to help you see. So yeah, we really enjoyed this project. And it was really cool. So thanks for giving us that opportunity to yeah. do this. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>